Hello everyone, Morris here and today I'm bringing you a guide to how to play with and beat Momo. So as you probably know, Momo is pretty much everywhere on the leaderboard right now, or in the arena in general, and I must say I've definitely played Momo. I was very excited when I see Momo like in the beginning of the season and uh, yeah, rushed to really just get, a hand, get my hands off. Uh, yeah, of Momo, it was pretty tough actually to have to complete the uh, the missions to get Momo. Managed to get Momo and then really just use Momo to climb definitely up to maybe I think uh, top, definitely top like hundred, maybe at like twenty something at the leaderboard. Uh, and at that point, I was like, wow, okay, so Momo is can be very strong. Uh, of course, my, I didn't really buy any XE to play with Momo, I just happened to have some support Axies that works well and yeah, just basically uh, yeah, play a lot of Momos for the first few days. Uh, of course then, uh, after the event, um, after the missions and stuff, right, I go back and play with my Leafy team and uh, yeah, unfortunately my Leafy team is not that good in terms of it's not very aggro and uh, yeah, so it's not very good against Momo but uh, I'll, well, Today I'm going to break down like how to play Momo, at least share with you my experience. Of course, by no means I'm an expert, right? I mean, I definitely am not a pro player, but just want to share my experience of how to play with Momo and also how to beat Momo teams. Okay, so let's just get into um, the, again, I, uh, it's a blog post that I wrote and uh, there's definitely a lot more detail, so do check it out. Uh, to be fair, TLDR here really is, uh, play Leafy if you want to beat Momo, uh, there's more data that I'll go into. Uh, and if you want to play Momo yourself, right, uh, which is actually quite fun, I would suggest that you at least try it out and play and see how, how it feels, uh, if you have the axes for it. And uh, you do need two support axes, I would say, right? Uh, at least one axis with a four turn taunt would be good. Right, uh, and uh, the other one is you know uh, different people play different things. Another one might have like another four turn ton, or some people might play Contel, which probably helps with a uh, matchup against Leafy. Uh, so yeah, let's just get into well. First of all, is how to play with Momo. So for those who don't really know, uh, have maybe haven't got your hands on Momo yet, then it is basically quite similar to Triple R, if you know Triple R, which is basically a kind of archetype where it takes time for Momo to uh, ramp up its damage, right? similar to how Triple R, you need time to ramp up the damage, but once you ramp up the damage, right, then it can deal massive damage in one turn or even one card. So in that sense, it's pretty similar to Triple R, and that's why the team composition is also pretty similar to Triple R, where for Triple R, you have like a Triple R Axie, of course, but then you have two very defensive Axies just to keep, you know, buy time, basically, and keep the Triple R Axie alive. So in a way, very similar, uh, and Momo works in a similar way. The main difference right, between Momo and Triple R really is that Momo's attack card can target any enemy, and this is why it's been very strong, especially as at the lower... Uh, ladder, I would say, right, where people might not have a lot of ways of playing um, around it, right? So, for example, you know, uh, at the higher level, maybe people have some taunts or something, right? Then you can buy at least um, make the target any enemy part a bit more manageable. But at the lower level, it yeah, sometimes if your key actually just gets type uh, type off by Momo, then it's gonna be pretty tough. So that's why Momo is very strong. Okay, so I'm not gonna go into it. I've uh, I've actually made a video on the starter axis, so do check that out. Uh, so I'm just actually just going to like you know, to talk more about how to build a Momo team. And here is uh, some examples. Sorry, a bit small, but do check out. So I actually got this screenshot from uh, xcboo.com, so do check that out. And basically on that website, you can filter uh, for archetypes, and then it will show you the teams for a particular archetype. Um, so basically, uh, I think I'm just going to actually go through more, okay, yeah, there are too many words here, so I think I'll just uh, just keep that uh, here and just talk through my points. So basically, the key is, um, you want to have at least one four turn ton, so here you have a cattail, here you have an ant, a cattail, and so on, right, so ant, so at least you have one um, four turn ton, and usually you want to use a mech with steel skin, right, so that it tanks a lot of damage. And you also want to have other shield cards as well, right, so that uh, you can keep your back alive for as long as possible. Right, so, so this is, uh, I guess, a must, I would say. And then for the other Axie, 
then this is where like there could be some differences. You can see actually these are the top five, right? And at the top, a lot of people are now actually using Cointel, which actually when I played it, I didn't use Cointel, but I do feel like having a Cointel is very useful, especially against Leafy, because for Leafy team, they usually have a Cointel, right? So if you have a Cointel yourself, then you can match the tempo a bit more and so that you can survive for a bit longer. So uh, I do think that Cointel is a good um, tech to have. Uh, but you can also go for like uh, another uh, taunt and you can see right uh, here actually there are not many taunts here right? so there are some taunts but having a taunt from the front could also be good as well just to play around shrimp and stuff like that and the other things that I want to say like, especially highlighting the top teams right is that a lot of them have card draws right clear here clear uh, clear here as well so uh, yeah clear like, so card draw I think is very important in terms of consistency especially uh, if you're playing this kind of ramp uh, not ramp like mm, team that ramps up damage right you want to be able to consistently draw into the cards that you uh, would want to play so I think the card draw is just good in general for any team really or most teams uh, and especially for Momo I would say that's because then it allows you to draw into a card that you know maybe a more defensive card if you need a defensive card this turn or you know just maybe a, a damage card that can snipe off your opponent that kind of thing so, so card draw is another, uh, I would say, I don't say must, but like a good to have. Uh, Lucas is actually pretty good as well, so it doesn't have to be clear or nerdy, right? Lucas also allows you to draw a specific bird card, which is also pretty uh, good, well, definitely good to have. And then there are other tech cards that could be good to have, right? Uh, for example, you see a lot of Silence Whisper here. Uh, just to attack against poison and um, you can see the top team actually doesn't have it and that's because uh, at the very top there's actually not that many poison up there it's just because uh, yeah you know at the top poison I won't say can't make it there but it's just that maybe it's um, less uh, in terms of uh, the popularity compared to other uh, other tiers and that's why like it might not be necessary but of, still good to have I would say uh, at least I see in this case one copy or even two copies here uh, so Silence Whisper is still good to have and the other thing is of course like things like Garish Worm uh, it's always good to discard your opponent's stuff and here you can see the different text as well so this is where uh, definitely is a very early stage of uh, the evolution of Momo uh, in terms of this development of the like, so-called uh, archetype because uh, you can see having a pokey could be good right so that you can divert all your lit little bro like to a particular axis so that could help uh, having confidence definitely yeah, confidence I think is pretty important especially against like things like sleep uh, kind of team um, yeah it's, uh, of course uh, the rage also just adds to the damage of Momo Shrow Star is actually an interesting one as well so it can actually allow you to snipe off an opponent weakened Axie uh, that otherwise you might not have uh, the reach because your opponent might have taunt as well so that could be pretty good yeah so just in general I mean uh, Arco also is another one if you want to beat sustain then Arco could be good especially there's a lot of uh, scaly spoons out there and the Arco definitely helps with that as well so of course at this point um, people are just playing with whatever they have and uh, none of the very so-called support axes are really well read yet so that's why uh, it's kind of like uh, you know as, as long as you have like some fortune taunts especially uh, having an innocent lamb that helps uh, just because uh, yeah, you have more consistency in getting to the fortune taunt now here uh, you have uh, another card draw pink cheek is another card draw as well so instead of uh, relying on basically uh, innocent them you just run on more card draw to get to your end so okay uh, that's kind of like the team uh, in terms of how to pilot uh, I must say I'm not an expert so I uh, don't really have any like secret insight into what you know, how you should pilot it I'm just gonna make some very general points and of course there will always be exceptions to these kind of uh, points as well uh, depending on the matchup depending on the situation and so on but uh, in general you want to focus down one Axie first right so that they will you know, get worse draws and of course this is kind of in general for Axie but particularly uh, because with Momo you have uh, the ability to target an enemy right so if you can target any enemy you want to target down one first especially you want to focus on uh, usually you want to focus on the strongest one meaning like the 
XC, the opponent's XC that can deal the most damage, you want to target that down first. Uh, but of course, like, uh, if opponent has Taunt, maybe you want to focus on the Taunt XC first. So it really depends on the matchup. But focusing down on XC first is, is, seems to be, should be a good way to go. Uh, and then the other tip that I, I often make the mis mistake of mismanaging my feather stacks, and that's, that's, that's not great, right? So basically, sometimes I get some feather dagger. Uh, not sure why, I just see some cards, I just want to play them, right? But then, in a way, you're kind of wasting your feather, right? Uh, because uh, you're using up, with, every time you attack for that particular turn, you're using up your feather. So uh, definitely think about, okay, how, how many feather stacks can you afford to use, right? So that the, the reason being, right, you don't want to get to a situation where you lose all your feather stacks is because you know oh, maybe there's this one turn where uh, you just somehow use some attack cards that does nothing or something right so definitely like uh, something to uh, keep in mind uh, especially when I'm sometimes I'm playing actually I'm not paying attention right I just kind of play whatever card is there then yeah somehow I was like oh no if I play this card get to a situation where I'm like if I attack here I'll lose all my feather stacks is because I couldn't get the feather back and something so yeah lost many games because of that so be careful of that and I guess the final point I want to make is uh, sometimes you might not want to taunt too early uh, just because let's say if you taunt turn one or something right you might uh, the opponent can just target down your back first um, so sometimes it might be good to like get uh, your front like, to take some damage first before you do the taunt so that you can distribute the damage across more and allow all your axes to survive more. So uh, of course that will make your draw a bit better right? compared to drawing revenge card, you draw into your actual card. So that's yeah, something to keep in mind. Okay, so that's for how to play Momo. So I guess uh, a lot of you probably are more looking forward to this particular section where we talk about how to beat Momo. This because I myself have been very frustrated uh, many times when faced against Momo, and uh, yeah, and especially because my Leafy team is not the most um, optimized for fighting against Momo. So I, I lost to Momo many, 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 many times. Uh, but okay, let's just get into the data, and the data does suggest that Leafy is really the 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 main archetype that's really keeping Momo in check here, uh, and yeah, Leafy consistently beats Momo across at least the top thousand. Um, okay, so the how how it works is basically that Leafy can just do so much damage. Um, just consistently, right? And basically, it's, it's basically a race, right? You're just trying to outpace the Momo team so that you can just KO the Momo before Momo can get their stacks up. And there are a lot of times uh, when I was playing with Momo, right? And yeah, I just needed to buy one more turn, right? Then I can KO the opponent's Axie, uh, but I just didn't have that turn because. Uh, they managed to kill me down, and uh, sometimes it could just go down to something like 1 HP, right? They just had enough damage to KO my Momo at that turn. If I have another turn, then I definitely can KO them, right? So there are a lot of situations like that, and that's why actually Quantel has been quite useful, probably for, for Momo team, right? So that you can maybe play another shield card, allowing you to just survive for another turn. Uh, so if you want to beat Momo, play Leafy, and in particular you want to play a very aggro build of Leafy, right? Because for my team, actually my Leafy is, is more mid-range and less, less aggro, and uh, it's just not fast enough to fight against uh, Momo. Uh, what you want to do uh, against Momo is that you want to put vulnerable and even fragile as well, right? And so that you can just deal a lot of damage, uh, yeah, very quickly, so that you basically just outpace or uh, yeah, outrace in terms of damage compared to Momo. Uh, yeah, just basically all the strong attack cards, right? So don't don't play any shield or something. It's just not worth the time just because then you're just allowing give, giving them time to ramp up their Momo, right? Just, just, just do damage as fast as possible. And yeah, that's basically the way to go. Um, Jinx is actually another option. Uh, not so great at the top, just because at the top you can see right, a lot of players have card draw and they take multiple card draws even, right? So that it just 
you know, it can be more consistent, right? And Jinx might be less well there. But if you're playing against less optimal Momo, uh, then Jinx is, can actually be pretty good, especially, you know, if you go lower down the ladder. Um, of course, one thing you can do is to, if you want to go first and then try and actually discard their, um, the Momo's power and turn one, that could be one way to go. But even without that, uh, you can also just... Uh, well, try to discard the Momo's attack cards and that will slow down their ramp in terms of damage, then yeah, that could be one way to go. All right, so Jinx might be one way to go if you, you don't have Leafy and you want to play Jinx. Uh, and then I guess the other one, it might be Poison uh, if you are really at the very top. But uh, the bad part about Poison is that it's probably not, have, not having a good matchup against other things and of course for poison if the opponent like a lot of like the top teams also still still tech for poison not everyone tech for poison but if they tech for poison it is pretty tough so i wouldn't recommend poison um especially at the lower rank i think a lot of people would tech for poison so it's gonna be pretty tough uh yeah so uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it really. Um, Topaz can can fight with um, Momo uh, if you ramp like ramp up the damage fast enough. So it's basically it's similar in terms of win rate, right? Uh, as Momo is basically very similar in terms of uh, just the idea, right? Is this it takes some time to set up, right? But then once you set up, you get a lot of damage. So it's just depending on who goes faster. That's basically it. Uh, yeah, so I think that's. Uh, well, all I have in terms of how you want to beat Momo, just play Leafy, deal a lot of damage. Um, so my view on Momo is that it is very strong. Uh, it's not game-breaking, I would say. Uh, at least it has its weakness, but it is. I still feel it is too strong in the sense that it limits the... You can think of it as design space, so this limits the meta. Right? For example, I want to play like a maybe more mid-rangey kind of build, it just won't work in this meta because of Momo. And of course, little R, uh, sorry, triple R as well, but Momo contribute to that, right? Because like, uh, a certain team has to has to deal damage at least at a certain speed so that you can actually out, you know, outrace Momo. Otherwise, Momo will just outrace you and then it, it limits uh, the arc in terms of diversity a bit, I would say. Um, but the other way to think about it is of course, Triple R exists already, so Momo is kind of like a different way of playing Triple R, and so in that sense, it kind of contribute to the um, diversity as well. So I think it is good to have um, you know something else out there like Momo, but I do feel like adjusting it a bit would probably help with like even further increasing the diversity of the meta by allowing more archetypes to you know to shine. Probably, but having said that, um, Momo is not the only problem, right? I mean, uh, Triple R also is dealing a lot of damage pretty quickly as well in terms of ramping up. So, and of course, Leafy as well. Um, so, I do feel like if you tone down those a bit, then you might see a, a bit more, maybe a really like mid rangey kind of deck uh, teams, just because now the teams are really more just about. Uh, like leafy, right? Very aggro or like sustain, right? Uh, just like you know, like full on control kind of team, uh, and more like combo, I would say. So it's combo will be something like triple R and Momo, where it's more like uh, ramping up the damage, and once you have a lot of damage, it will just kill everything kind of thing. So yeah, there's really not much uh, room for mid range kind of team, and maybe that's just the part of Axie, right? Is just that having good value but doesn't have the aggro and it's not fully controlled just doesn't quite work just because you know, combo teams are there uh, but anyway so that's kind of just my thoughts on just the meta in general and whether you know momo and other starter axes how they should be uh, i guess adjusted in terms of power level but anyway uh, so that's that. Um, so if you like uh, the video, do uh, please give me a like and subscribe. And also, yeah, check out the blog post. Um, and yeah, okay, so enjoy playing with Momo or hopefully you can get a leafy team and beat some Momo teams out there. Okay, so that's it for today and I'll see you in the next video.